This video continues our talk about topics in inventory management. Here we're going to just very briefly set out the inventory positions in the supply chain. This is a very straightforward uh, set of slides. So we'd start with raw materials. Uh, clearly we can start further back with the suppliers or even the, the suppliers of the raw materials or even the raw materials themselves are the uh, mined in a particular country or a particular area or are they wood or metal or what are they so we could talk about the raw materials but I just want to keep this very simple and just show the progression here very simple progression from raw materials to finished goods so we move from raw materials into work in progress and from the perspective of stores management that's the way it works it, it's, this is our internal supply chain within the business we have raw materials in the stores which get converted through the production process into works in progress and eventually the works in progress will be taken out of the store works in progress may be made for storage or they may be made because they're, they're needed at the time but if they do go into the stores they come back out and they will be used eventually to make finished goods and the finished goods are then moved uh, to the customer or moved to some point of dispatch in the field. So they're moved into the market by the, the dispatch team, by the, the team within the business who looks after deliveries. And that's a very simplified supply chain. Just looking at within the business how raw materials get converted into work in progress that eventually get converted into the finished goods and are then shipped to the customers or to various outlets in the market now control of inventories to avoid both under and overstocking of items now this topic arises in other videos but it's uh, never a miss to to restate it for a start let's look at understocking this means too few of the item. Now this results in missed deliveries, lost sales, dissatisfied customers, and production bottlenecks, uh, idle workers or machines. So the, the term used here is uh, underage stock cost. So there is a stock cost associated with this and this is known as underage stock cost. Um, when too few items are in stores, dissatisfied customers means loss of sales and damage to the reputation of the business. But it also means that some workers will be idle and some machines will be idle, waiting for deliveries. So there are costs associated with having too few items in the stores. Overstocking too many items in the stores ties up funds that might be more uh, used more productively elsewhere and we'll talk about this again in a moment but essentially overstocking is a costly exercise it takes up space uh, in the stores it needs a lot of handling and it also has to be purchased and the resources the financial resources gone to purchase these items could have been used perhaps for a better purpose within the business and this results in what's known as overage stock cost so we have two two new terms underage and overage stock costs good control of inventories is to match supply and demand as in economics supply and demand is equal uh, the, the price is right the quantity produced is the quantity that is demanded by the customer so that's the ideal world but we were we live in a world in which we have uncertainty uh, we can't make proper decisions because perhaps too many things are happening to us there's innovation change government policy changing demands by customers globalization so many factors that it's difficult to read the market requirements and companies face this problem but in an ideal world and we don't live in an ideal world but if we did then demand would equal supply the amount coming in 
will be exactly that required by production to exactly meet customer requirements. Now reasons for inventories, well better customer service because if if the company is producing the item and it's kept in stock within the stores when the customers place an order it can be met immediately so the customers are very happy they don't have to wait but also at work in progress it'll speed up the production process so better customer service but there are also economies in purchasing sometimes Companies produce for stock because they're able to place larger orders for raw materials and thereby get discounts. They're able to negotiate discounts because they're placing larger orders, albeit for an item which will be produced, which will cost resources, which will have to be stored, which will cost resources. But if the discount outweighs that, it's still a good idea. So there are economies in purchasing. There are also economies in production. Having smooth, continuous production is more efficient than having it stop and start and uh, retooling and moving personnel from one place to another. So economies of production can result in uh, more continuous production processes. Albeit, as I said, it, they are producing for for the stores they are producing for it to go into stock. But when customers place the order, as I said earlier, customers will have a better experience. It will come to them faster. There could be transport savings because uh, the company receives perhaps one shipment as opposed to many small shipments. So there are transportation savings uh, when holding inventories. So perhaps one large delivery which will then be produced into whatever the company makes, which will be held in the stores. That one large delivery might be more efficient than having several small deliveries. It's also a hedge against the future. Uh, when the company produces for stock, if something happens, something adverse happens, perhaps the suppliers can no longer get the stock or there's a hold up in the suppliers getting their stocks so that would impact on the business if the business already has a large stock of finished items or raw materials in the stores it's able to continue to produce whilst the problem is being resolved elsewhere so it's it's heading it's hedging against adverse future situations Unplanned shocks, for example, labour strikes, natural disasters, surges in demand. We can think of others, perhaps. But unplanned shocks means that there's a variation in the demand. Or there's a variation in the supply. Something adverse happens to the business or something fortuitous happens to the business. But the, the, fine, the point is it's unplanned and it's a shock to the system. It's a shock to the, to the company. Well, if the company has stocks of raw materials, work in progress and finished items, it's in a better position to ride out that shock. It's in a better position to uh, continue until the, the shock, whatever is causing it, has been resolved. To maintain independence of supply chain. Uh, it's important that the business has got some control over uh, over the situation it finds itself in. Uh, it can't just be swept along by the suppliers or by the market. It, it needs to plan. It needs to use its resources efficiently. And to that end, uh, by producing for stock, it's able to optimize production, plant layout, proper utilization of machinery and personnel, better use of the, the backup systems, um, better use of the office systems, the administration. Uh, a more efficient organization can be, uh, can be developed. And this is because there is independence of the supply chain. In other words, they're able to look after their own little supply chain. They're able to get um, the raw materials in, turn the raw materials into 
uh, work in progress into finished goods, they have got control over this. So at least that part of the supply chain is under the control of the business and they're able to use that effectively. Now the reasons against inventories, against holding inventories, well it's non-value uh, value added cost. Once the company buys raw materials it's converting say financial resources into raw materials. Well the raw materials are just sitting in the stores. They're just inanimate objects in the stores. They're not doing anything. They're not being used. They're in the stores waiting to be used. And as long as they're in the stores they're just non-value added. They're, they're not contributing towards the business. I say that but in fact if, um, if the price of that resource was rising very rapidly due to let's say a world shortage of that item then it may appreciate in value significantly whilst it's just sitting in the stores. So we have to be careful just to say that all stocks are dead weight and uh, a drain on the financial resources of the business. It could be that the stock is appreciating in value very rapidly. Perhaps some metal for example, perhaps I don't know, copper perhaps, is rising in price let's say very rapidly and the company buys at one price and a few weeks later it's a much higher price. Well if it had followed uh, good practice within the stores it may have not placed the order in the first place so now it will have to buy at the higher price. But generally speaking a lot of what companies hold in the stores uh, are just sitting waiting to be used and the longer they just sit there waiting to be used they are dead weight. Their, their financial resources tied up doing nothing. There is an opportunity cost and this is a, really an economics term. Opportunity cost in economics is defined as the cost of the next best alternative foregone. It's what we give up to have something. So the cost of let's say buying a ton of copper the cost of that is not the cost of uh, what we spend, the financial resources we spend on it. It's the cost of what could have, what could that money have been used for? What's the, the alternative to buying the copper? The alternative could be to perhaps update the computer system. In that case, the cost of the copper is the computer system that the company doesn't have because it gave it up. It's not the resources, not the financial resources, the money that's gone into buying the copper. It's not having a better computer system. That's what we mean by the opportunity cost. So it's what the company could have done with those resources had it not bought uh, those, uh, those items for stock. So stock involves an opportunity cost that must be taken into account. Now opportunity cost is, is uh, it's subjective. We may evaluate it differently. Um, the cost of a ton of copper as I said may have been the computer system that wasn't upgraded. But to a different manager it may be uh, a new fleet of cars for the marketing people, the marketing staff. So the cost the opportunity cost would be different for that person and another person may say well instead of buying the copper we could um, let's say have a, a better training program for the staff that's the opportunity cost so there is an element of subjectivity in opportunity cost it depends on who we speak to and what their priorities are There is a problem of complacency with stocks in stores. Um, it's, it's comfortable because the stocks arrive into the stores and then the production personnel book them out of the stores. Um, it's, it means that the, the store manager may slightly overstock because it cuts down on the amount of work, the amount of paperwork and the amount of handling that has to be done with new deliveries for example. So 
the company may become complacent, become easygoing, because they've got stocks, and they gradually the stock holding will increase, so as to cut down the amount of work, the amount of effort, and the production personnel will also take it for granted that the stock will be there, so they may not inform the um, the stores about upcoming orders or upcoming production surges. They're just expecting the stock to be there. So practices throughout the business may become complacent. It's also the case that inventories may deteriorate. They may become obsolete, lost, stolen, or just generally deteriorate physically. It depends on the nature of the stock item. When we think of stock items, we may think of metallic products or, or metal products, but it doesn't have to be. It could be um, a company that's dealing in food items or in um, chemical items. And these may deteriorate over time. So if, if they're bought into the stores, too many of them are bought in, so there's a lot of stock not moving within the stores, that stock may deteriorate as it sits there. Or it may become obsolete. Uh, we live in a world which is typified by a high degree of dynamism and innovation. So the products may change, the designs may change, so that items purchased for one product may become obsolete, no longer required because now that product has been replaced by a different product. Well, that means the stock is now stuck. It's, it's in the stores. It's been paid for. Now there's a question of disposing of it and the cost of disposal. So there are reasons against holding stock that should be borne in mind. There are also reasons for holding stock. Uh, it really depends on the business and on a, a thorough investigation of the pros and cons. That's all we're going to do with in this uh, session, so let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.